Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk about quantum cryptography in Algorithmica. This is joint work with William Kreshmer, Mark Ransinha, and Avi Shetel. So let me begin by asking the following question. Why do we need computational harness assumptions for cryptography? Well, if you ask this question to a cryptographer, then he or she will probably tell you that, well, for most practically relevant cryptographic tasks, for example, encryption, authentication signatures, or multi-party computation, all of these primitives will in turn imply a cryptographic primitive called one-way functions. And it turns out once we know that if one-way functions exist, then we will be able to separate MP from P, which is, um, as you probably have known, that this is a very hard open question and it is worth at least a million dollars. So there seems to be a barrier for proving that they are actually secure. Therefore, some computational harness assumptions are needed in order to justify their security. However, let me bring your attention to the following paper published um, in 1989 by Bennett and Brassard. Basically, what they did in this paper is that they sh did a physical experiment uh, where they perform quantum key distribution in the real world. For those of you that don't know, quantum key, key distribution is a way of doing key exchange in an information theoretically secure manner. And of course, since 1989, many, many decades have passed. So right now we are living in year 2023 and you can find a lot of these experimental devices hanging around in uh, most universities. People have done even more extensive experiments like uh, ground to satellite quantum key distribution. And you can even purchase a QKD kit uh, to perform this kind of experiment in your own house. So all, all of this is great, but let's connect this to the question that I raised uh, at the beginning, which is why do we need harness assumption? Certainly, we thought that key exchange would require computational assumption. And yet, we were able to do key exchange without uh, the existence of one-way functions or without assuming that they exist. So how did we manage to do that? It turns out that if you open up the proof how you construct a one-way function from key exchange protocols. It actually implicitly assumed that all the parties, or in this case, the two parties, only have classical communication channels. However, if we look at these experiments since 1989, they have clearly falsified this physical assumption about the model of communication in the real world. Therefore, a natural question arises. If we consider a more realistic model of the real world, uh, meaning accounting for quantum mechanics, do we still need to make computational harness assumptions for performing cryptographic tasks like key exchange and other things? In fact, ever since QKD was discovered, quantum information theorists have looked at all these other kind of uh, cryptographic tasks and see if they can also be performed in an information theoretically secure manner. Unfortunately, it turns out that all of these wonderful cryptographic things that we do in practice are still out of reach for information theoretic security, even if you assume people have quantum communications. These include commitments, oblivious transfer, MPC, encryption, authentication, etc. So it seems like QKD is actually the exception instead of the norm. In other words, we have to assume that the adversaries are still computationally bounded. In other words, computational harness is still needed. However, the question I raised at the beginning is regarding computational harness assumptions, which is whether we need to assume some computational harness um, does exist in our world. Can we just prove them exist in, instead of having to rely on unproven assumptions? So in this work, we will be focusing a little bit on a more concrete question. For which cryptographic task do we still need P not equal MP? Since P versus MP is obviously a, a very significant barrier 
for complexity theory. Of course, we do not resolve this problem, and nevertheless, we do make some progress towards answering this question. So what we did prove in this work is an oracle separation between quantum cryptography and P versus MP. Formerly, having an oracle separation rules out uh, a wide class of proof techniques called relativizing proof techniques. In other words, you cannot use these proof techniques for proving the statement that quantum cryptography implies P is separate from MP. So the informal theorem states that it is possible to construct an oracle world where P equals MP. So in other words, this is what Impagliazzo refers to as the algorithmica, where you can solve every MP problem efficiently. But on the other hand, it is still possible to perform computationally secure quantum cryptography. In particular, we are going to construct a form of quantum pseudo-randomness. And from prior works, uh, once we have this kind of quantum pseudo-randomness, we can perform a lot of quantum cryptographic tasks, including commitments, oblivious transfer, zero knowledge, MPC, uh, undecodable black holes even. Now let me tell you a little bit more about what specifically is this quantum pseudo-randomness. So the quantum pseudo-randomness that we constructed uh, in this work is the object of pseudo-random states introduced by Ji, Liu, and Song in 2018. But the specific variant that we will be focusing on today is uh, first defined by Morimei and Yamakawa last year. So on the high level, this is very similar to pseudo-random generators. But instead of outputting um, a pseudo-random bit string, pseudo-random states output a pseudo-random quantum state. So formally, we say that uh, a quantum algorithm G is a single copy secure pseudo-random state or PRS generator if it satisfies the following two conditions. The first condition is efficient generation. It takes as input a lambda bit C, just like a PRG, um, it runs in polynomial time, and then it outputs some pure state of uh, three lambda qubits. We say pure, and basically it is the quantum analog of requiring a PRG to be deterministic. And here we require three lambda qubits to be simplistic, but it should have some stretch, just like how a PRG should have some stretch. On the other hand, uh, the second condition is called pseudo-randomness, which states that if I give you um, a pseudo-random state, uh, one copy of the pseudo-random state for a uniformly random key or seed, then this state should be computationally indistinguishable from a 3 lambda bit bit string. So this is what it means for single copy security. You can also generalize this to many copy security, which states that um, such a state even given any polynomial number of copies should still be computationally indistinguishable from that number of copies of hard random states. The reason that here we focus on three lambda qubits is that uh, once we have three lambda qubits, you can we can morally like just instantiate our commitment, but instead of using a PRG, we use a PRS, and then basically the, the same construction will go through, although that will require a different proof. Now that we've introduced the definition, let's go back to the oracle separation. First of all, recall that um, in the black box setting, so meaning that with only relativizing proof techniques, we can already prove that from post-quantum one-way functions, we can construct pseudo-random states. And once we, we have pseudo-random state, we can construct commitments and all of those wonderful cryptographic applications. And the formal statement theorem of this work is the following. There is a classical oracle relative to which single copy secure PRS exists, but P equals MP. In other words, um, we can have quantum cryptography in algorithmica. In fact, in this world, we not only have P equals MP, we have P equals PH, where PH is the closure of MP. We also compare this statement with the theorem from the prior work by Kreshmer, who proved that there is actually a quantum oracle relative to which the stronger notion of many copy secure PRS exists, but yet, P, BQP equals QMA, which is morally the quantum analog of P equals MP. Let me quickly remark uh, or answer the following question, 
which is that why isn't the prior work by Kreshmer already conclusive enough? The first reason is that the prior work by Kreshmer, the quantum oracle separation is actually somewhat cheating. In particular, uh, if you have a one-way function, a one-way function has to be evaluated by a classical Turing machine, which can never make use of a quantum oracle. So maybe it makes sense that you cannot perform secure classical cryptography in this world because uh, every participating party will not be able to actually use the harness in the quantum oracle. The second reason is that even formally, quantum oracle separations are weaker than classical oracle separations, meaning that they rule out fewer proof techniques than classical ones. In the work by Aronson in 2009, he showed that there is some quantum oracle separation that fails relative to any classical oracle. And the third reason is that the Kreshmer's prior separation, the construction of the pseudorandom state is non-interesting in the sense that it is not clear how to actually instantiate it. In particular, um, basically the oracle there has a hard random oracle and to construct a pseudorandom state you just use the hard random oracle to construct the peer, uh, pseudorandom state directly. However, unlike the classical analog which is a random oracle which you can heuristically instantiate with a cryptographic hash function like SHA-3, for hard random oracle we really don't know how to heuristically instantiate them except for maybe ad hoc ideas. Indeed, even constructing a pseudo-random unitary, uh, which is a unitary analog of pseudo-random function, is still an open question since 2018. Whereas to co constructing a pseudo-random function, we know how to do just using a one-way function. And finally, the oracle separation we get uh, gets you p equals mp, which is what in Pagliazzo calls algorithmica. Whereas the prior work by Kreshmer, he gets bqp equals qma, which in Pagliazzo does not give a name for. And also formally, these two equality are incomparable, meaning that there are oracle separations between each of them, or either directions. Now let me go back to our oracle separation and tell you how we actually constructed this separation. So let's start by uh, looking at how we constructed the pseudorandom state. So our starting point is the binary phase construction of PRS. So to construct a PRS, uh, again, your input is a short seed of lambda bits. And we are going to, based on what the key or the seed is, we are going to pick a Boolean function mapping n bits to one bit. So in our case, uh, n here, just think of it as being three lambda, but it actually generalized to synthesizing any number of qubits, any polynomial number. So here's how the algorithm works. You start in the state of O0, so you have n zero qubits. Uh, again, n is three lambda for the purpose of this talk. You apply Hadamard of on each of them. And then you are all going to apply basically what's called a phase oracle on this uniform superposition. And what you'll get is a uniform superposition but with plus minus one phases where if f sub k of x is one you get a phase minus one otherwise you get a phase one or plus one so this construction was originally proposed in the very first work by ji liu and song in 2018 and later it was proven by brad kursky and shmuley that this construction is secure if you instantiate these f's using either a random oracle or a pseudo-random function. One natural idea is that even if p equals mp, maybe there are still some Boolean function uh, such that this is still a pseudo-random state. Unfortunately, in the work by Kreshmer, it was already shown that if p equals mp, then for any efficient function f, this binary phase pseudo-random state construction is in fact broken. Therefore, in this work, we have to do something else, but we'll build on this idea. So what we do in this work is basically we do the same thing, but do it a bunch more times. So previously what we do is basically we start with the zero state and then Hadamard and then apply um, a phase oracle for a function. 
what we are going to do in this work is just do this more. So we do hardware again to face Oracle on the different Boolean function sign and so forth. And let's say we do this for T iterations for T functions F1 to Fn. So this construction has the Q name of Hadamard face cocktail construction because we are interleaving Hadamard gates with face oracles. So it's not hard to see that uh, if we take T to be one and then take F1 to be just the random oracle, then we essentially um, recover the binary face PRS construction. So in other words, if uh, the one for relation state with F1 being the random oracle is in fact a pseudo random state secure against BQP. So what we show in this work is that if you consider doing this one more time, so the two for relation state with uh, F1, F2 being two independent random oracles, then this is uh, actually in fact a single copy secure pseudo random state secure against BQP even with a PH oracle. In this case, since we are considering a random oracle, you can think of this machine as a BQP machine but that can query any PH statement about the random oracle. So in particular, for the same adversary, it will be able to break the one for relation state for any construction of one for relation state. But on the other hand, if you look at two for relation state, uh, it is in fact secure. Finally, we also introduce a new T for relation conjecture under which we show uh, that the T for relation state uh, with Fi's being the random oracle is in fact multi-copy secure pseudo random states against BQP with a pH oracle. Now let me quickly tell you the four relation problem introduced by Aronson. The four relation problem is basically a function about Boolean function query complexity. So in particular, you are given a pair of functions f and g, and your task is to distinguish whether uh, between the following two cases. The first case is that f and g are correlated, meaning that the Fourier transform of f is correlated with g. And in the second case, f and g are uniformly random, so with high probability, they are um, indeed not correlated. So this problem was introduced to uh, give a problem that separates BQP from PH. Or in other words, it is an oracle separation between BQP and PUH as proven by the breakthrough results by Raz and Tao. In this work, we are going to focus on a particular variant of this problem called OR of four relation, which is the OR function composed with the four relation. And this problem was first studied by the prior work by Aronson, Ingram, and Kreshmer, where they showed that this problem is in fact hard on average, even against BQP with a pH oracle. We are going to try to reduce uh, an adversary that breaks the pseudo randomness guarantee into a solver for or of four relation. In the process of doing so, we introduced a new harness property of a cryptographic hash function called harness of shifted for relation. You are given a function big F, let's say big F is just uh, a piece of code, and we say it is hard to find shifted for relation if a certain security game is hard. So this security game, you should think of it as very similar to uh, a PRF security game, where you are given some oracle and you can make quantum query, uh, superposition queries to this oracle, and you are trying to decide whether it's pseudo random versus random. Whereas here, you are given quantum query access to little f, and you want to distinguish between the two cases, where the first case is that this little f when you shift the second part of the big F, it is in fact correlated with the first, uh, the first part of the big F uh, under some secret key K. The second case is that this function that I'm giving you to query is just a random function. So with high probability, um, there does not exist any case such that those two things are correlated. What we do show in this work is that uh, if a certain function f satisfies this hardness, then if you consider the two for relation state for this same function f, then it indeed satisfies single copy security of pseudo randomness. On the other hand, if you have a random oracle, uh, or you take big F to be the random oracle, then it indeed does satisfy uh, the BQP to the pH hardness, and we 
prove this by reducing the, the, this problem to a variant of uh, the average case hardness of oral correlation. Although in the end, after we do this reduction, we get a somewhat different uh, average case distribution for this oral correlation uh, problem. Therefore, uh, we also uh, define this new correlation distribution and also analyze the average case hardness of that and reprove that it is still hard. So I want to reserve the remaining time for discussing the implications of such a result. We introduced a new hardness property for a classical hash function called hardness of shifted correlation that satisfies the following three conditions. The first condition is that um, it is useful for constructing a lot of quantum cryptography like commitments. Second of all, this property is uh, a plausible because if you just take a random function, it indeed satisfies this hardness property. Finally, this property seems to be even weaker than p not equal mp or even p not equal ph. Indeed, we proved that this is the case in the black box setting. Finally, uh, we can also take in the standard random oracle heuristic and heuristically instantiate our true correlation state with a cryptographic hash like SHA-3, then such a construction of PRS will be plausibly secure even if someone discovered a proof that P equals MP or P equals PH. Uh, let's go back to the question from the very beginning. Does cryptography really need computational hardness assumption? So what this work, along with the prior work combined, show is that this question seems to be independent of Impagliazzo's five worlds, where the cryptography includes a lot of the cryptography that we use in the real world, like MPC encryption authentication. Indeed, we formally show that they are independent in the relativized world. However, this is also not the full story. For example, Crashmore showed that if you have many copy PRS, then it separates PP from BQP. And therefore, many copy secure PRS does seem to still require harmless assumptions. However, it doesn't really say anything about uh, the cryptographic tags themselves like encryption. In an upcoming work, we show that if you have any computationally, even quantumly falsifiable assumption, uh, meaning that uh, the security game involves an efficient challenger, then if such a security game is information theoretically broken but computationally secure, then you will be able to separate a unitary version of P from a unitary version of P space. However, this does not really mean that they would require hardness assumption because such a separation might just be already provably different without assuming any assumptions. So the question whether cryptography needs hardness assumption is still very much open. As it turns out that there are actually many natural computational tasks with quantum inputs or outputs that are actually not captured by our, our current complexity theory. Indeed, our oracle separation uh, as is already gives such an example where breaking quantum cryptography is provably not captured by our current complexity theory, which traditionally thinks that the, the existence of cryptography is captured by the class MP. However, this is not the only example. The prior work by Aharonov et al. They also consider a different setting where uh, maybe you want to use a quantum computer to decode the results uh, coming out of a quantum experiment. There are many examples like ground state preparation, tomography, quantum error correction, decoding black hole radiation. So to conclude, for open questions, maybe we should better understand the complexity of performing these quantum tasks, including but not limited to breaking quantum cryptography. Uh, as shown that by our oracle separation, this problem really needs to be studied separately instead of uh, hoping that they will be resolved once we use the classical complexity theory. Some other open questions for cryptography, does single copy pseudorandom state or weaker things like quantum commitment schemes, that do they imply um, P not equal P space for the decisional version, which we believe that uh, proving such a statement is hard? or are there actually separations that they are in, in fact even independent of P versus P space? Finally, the question that I've been asking for this talk, 
Can we just prove that quantum cryptography exists without assumptions? Or are there other barriers that we are not aware of? That's all for the talk. Thank you very much.